It's time to ring in the new year, which means you're probably being inundated with weight loss and getting fit videos. Now, I'm not even remotely qualified to talk about any of those things, but I will be talking about how to get your creative space organized. Going into the new year, you kind of just want to clean things up a bit. Everybody likes to tidy up get all the trash out, get the holiday crafting glitter somewhat scraped away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bum rush through a ton of organizational tools, the things that I use in my creative space, and hopefully that will inspire you to do the same. Okay, first up, <laughs> it's a little heavy, but a tool chest. Now you may be wondering why in the heck does she have a bona fide tool chest in her sewing room? So basically I have this big cutting table area. Say hi to the camera and the lights. And this section back here is where I piled a ton of really small little things to kind of organize little bits and pieces. And eventually they would kind of make their way off the table and out into the cutting mat area. That made my life a living heck. Yeah, so it's like I had like the Gladware, which I do love. I'll just use those like little Gladware sandwich things, which I'll show you in a bit, the organized tiny bits of hardware and stuff. But I had little cups of miscellaneous things like my rotary blades, pens, pencils, chalk, things like that. And it just ended up being all loosey goosey and getting all over. And every time I would go to like roll out vinyl or a larger material like the waterproof canvas, it just went off the table and some stuff might be hiding behind it. <laughs> So I got this for Christmas from my dad and it's just an Amazon Basics tool chest. So we'll open it up. And of course, I've also heard that tackle boxes are good for this too. I just like the fact that it came in like Tiffany blue, okay? It's Tiffany's. So you can see, I like did some really special stuff. I got these little plastic organizers also off of Amazon and they fit perfectly in the top section here. So you'll note that I have two kinds of plastic organizers. These are the new ones. It comes in a set of like 27, 35, 50, whatever, right? Comes in a huge set, but they're just like a millimeter too tall for the drawers. So when you look at the description below, I'm actually going to like denote, okay, these are the ones that I got for the drawers. So I could only fit organizers inside the, the middle drawer here. And basically I also lined each of these with the no slip grips and I can put all of the stuff that I need access to from my cutting table into this and it slides right back into that corner under the camera. Just to give you a closer look at the inside here, I have my sewing aids, my uh, frayed check, I've got my wee stapler that I like to use when doing binding, and then my rotary cutters, uh, measuring utensils, point turners, all that good stuff, and of course, marking. So I have chalk and pens and uh, disappearing ink pens. And down here is where I've put all of the tape that I like to use, my leather tapes. I have this funny sticker I got from a friend, snaps, more stickers, and just little tchotchkes. You know, I'm sure I will change this up over time. Um, the drawers do, I'm doing this with one hand naturally, they do kind of pop in place. There is no kind of locking mechanism. So they have like a really nice grip on them. And by the way, you can't open them unless the top is open. But we'll open that up. And this is where I put my pattern weights and uh, my roller, box cutter, you know, all the safe things, right? <laughs> yeah, so we put all that stuff in there and it just slides back out of the way. And actually, I'll just show you now, this is what the desk looks like now with it moved out of the way. And I'm just gonna pop back a bit. And you can see I've got so much more space to work with now on that cutting table than I did before. These, by the way, were sitting on the floor just behind me. They are actually the plastic organizers I used in the top portion of the box. They won't work again on the drawer because they're just like a touch too tall, but they do work in the Ikea uh, chests that I have under the desk. I'll show you in a minute. It's just. It's kind of embarrassing to show what's under the desk sometimes. But I bought this in like a pack of 37. It was a really weird number. But the fun thing is 
it was only after I unpacked all of them from the box that I realized they actually have little divots in here underneath four of them. And it comes with the no grip slip dots that you can put in there and it doesn't increase the height of it at all. And then they won't slip around. You can actually see down here where I've organized one of my drawers with these. So I have two in here that are super long and then I've put some of my smaller bag of hardware in and they go all the way back. This, this drawer is ridiculously huge. All right, okay, if we pan down, you can see under the cutting table, I have these little drawer units. These are from Ikea and I love them very, very much. I'm sure you can find a different brand uh, just in case you don't have an Ikea near you because shipping from Ikea is like non-existent. But I use these drawers to help organize all of my supplies. I don't necessarily need to have like access to underneath the desk. So I decided to fill it up with all of these drawers. You can even see that under the table here, I've, that's where I store my wool mat for pressing. So if I have a quilt bleh, quilt that I'm working on, then I ha just have my mat in here and all of my longer rulers and here as well. So it just has like a little area to bounce around in, in between, but it's driving my OCD nuts. Next on my list, rolling carts. These three tier carts come from Amazon and they're pretty dang affordable. I have two of them in this room. One of them is over there and it's holding like stationery and stuff, it's things that I need like if I'm doing a lot of work with my planner. And then this one has all of my HTV materials and anything special for like the heat press and sublimation. One of the things I thought about doing but never really got around to because I've organized everything else so much differently now was actually having this be like a tool cart that I take in between the different stations. But if I'm basically working um, here, then I don't really need it as much. But if I had a larger room and I had to roll around all of my tools machine to machine, then maybe that would be kind of useful. That said, I do have something like that in my workshop as I bounce between the different lasers and my Recoma. Plus, when I'm done with it, I can just roll it away right back into the closet that I have covered with a shame curtain so no one can see my mess. Oh. You're probably wondering what this is over here. So you may have heard of the dream box. I think anybody in the crafting world has because of wanting to organize. This is the cubby, which is made by the same company as dream box. And I found out about this through another smart doll creator and decided to grab one specifically to organize my smart doll stuff. However, it is entirely possible for you to put sewing gear in here or any crafting gear, anything other than all of the tiny doll things that I have put in it. <laughs> Somebody needs to stage an intervention or I'm gonna buy more of that stuff, yeah. So I don't wanna forget this. So this is also something I got off of Amazon, surprise. If you don't want to get something as heavy as a stainless steel toolbox, you can also gun for this. It has a really deep section at the top to organize. This is the one that I use to organize all of my jewelry materials. The front here just pops down and you come, it comes with these four little drawers, but the problem is they are little. So it's easier for storing like smaller notions like buttons and rivets and snaps and things like that not necessarily the larger tools that you would want to easily access at the cutting table. That said, I have this one for jewelry and then the other one I actually use for miniature things, miniature notions, of course, for my smart dolls. So there's two things that generally happen to be off camera when I'm doing recordings or live streaming. I have this really cool shoe organizer that's on the back of my door and I have pegboard. I feel like pegboard is one of those things that is like a no brainer. Like you should have pegboard somewhere if you have a very crafty environment, but maybe not everybody knows that it exists. So why don't we go over that a bit and I'll show you what I have, you know, and how I've organized. So here we have the pegboard. This is the Ikea pegboard, but of course you can get this stuff anywhere. You can go to a Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever you have as far as a hardware store goes and get all the tools that you need. It does not have to be something that was made overseas. So here I have all of my spools of thread. I have had to put them way up high 
because I have a cat that will eat it and die. I will say that I do like the IKEA stuff only because they come with all these little accessories that you can get and then label. And this is where I put some of the hardware that I use for bag making a little less than usual because it's not at my hands. Now, if you look at the back of the door here, you'll see that I have this wonderful organizer. It's just a shoe rack, a literal shoe rack. There's nothing super special about it. It is a $9.99 shoe rack that I use to put zipper tape, hardware, like the bulkier stuff, some of my webbing, and it just keeps it out of the way. Oh, and you may have noticed this too. This is also an Ikea Billy bookcase. I think that an organizational video, regardless of what year it's in, needs to include the Billy bookcase. If anybody has an Ikea near them or within two hours, you should probably own a couple of the bookcases. I have this one, which is thinner, and you may recognize that it used to be off to the side of my cutting table. I moved it so I could have the HTV Ront Press closer to me, but I also have two larger ones that hold all of my fabric. I warn you, it's an organized mess, but I do have all of my fabric in these bookcases that flank my cutting table. So if we pull back a bit and hopefully I won't step into anything. You can see this is what I see and you don't see because I consider it to be an organized mess. Last but not least, Gladware, otherwise known as temporary Tupperware. I use this stuff religiously. This is how I keep my hardware. I have a label maker. I put labels on it so I can easily look over and be like, aha, that is where my triglides are, which is an improvement over what it used to be, which was just bags shoved into the corner. And I was like, I wonder what's in there. So I actually organized this probably a year ago when I got on like the organization like train and uh, my life is so much better now. But these are super cheap. You can get them at any of your grocery stores and I just love using them. Some of them I just have as like, here are my zipper pulls. And I do it to fish around to find a specialty zipper pull, but it does make things a lot easier for me because at least I know about where they are. So that's it for my top organizational tools to make my crafting space easier to deal with. If there's anything that I did not mention that you might want to know more about, maybe you caught it in a glimpse of the uh, video, then let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer as best I can. Or on the opposite side of that, if you have something you didn't see in my room that you would like to suggest, please let me know because I'm an absolute freak for organization. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel to support it, hit the notification bell, and Bob's your uncle. Thank you so much. Have a great day.